Hello everyone. Uh, today's video is going to be about making predictions and this goes with the learning goal I can find theoretical and experimental probabilities and use them to make predictions. I have two examples. We are going to show how to use theoretical probability to make a prediction and then also how to use experimental probability to make a prediction and I'm going to give you a couple opportunities to try this out on your own and that'll be it. So here's an example using theoretical probability. It says, according to game rules, the probability that a bottled water cap can be redeemed for a prize is one out of 24. If a store stocks 500 bottles of water, about how many winning caps are likely? So we know that for this game, the water manufacturer has put, has made one out of every 24 caps be winners. But we don't know that that exact ratio of winners has been shipped to the store that we're talking about. So that's why this is a theoretical probability. We know the exact probability that's there, that's been set up. Just like when we roll a die, we know that one out of the six sides has a one on it, and we can use that to make predictions. So we're just going to use this to make a prediction. But as always, when we're using probability to make predictions, the actual outcome may not match exactly what our prediction is. Um, the probability will help us to get a good idea of what may happen and what is likely to happen, but it does not give us the exact outcome. And so you always have to keep that in mind when you're using probability. How are we gonna figure this out? To me, when I solve probability problems like this, uh, the easiest way is just to set up a proportion, just like I would for lots of different types of problems. So I know that one out of every 24 bottle caps is a winner. And so I wanna know then, what would I predict would be the number of winners if I had 500 total bottle caps? And so I can just solve this by cross multiplying. So if I cross multiply, I can see I will get 24x equals 500 divide these both by 24, and I'll get x equals. You can see I have 20.83333 repeating. And so since we're talking about bottle caps here and we can't have a part of a bottle cap that would be a winner, I would say that about 21, by, I would predict that about 21 of the 500 bottle caps would be winners. So we're going to say about 21. Suppose that they've now changed the probability in this game and they made the winning number just one out of 40. Um, how many winning caps would you predict there would be out of the 500 bottles then? Okay, so you can see and hopefully you got that if the uh, probability was one out of 40 that you would predict that there would be about 13 um, winning bottle caps out of 500, between 12 and 13. So either one of those would be a valid prediction. Okay, now this is an example of using experimental probability to make predictions. So here is a survey that we've taken. We um, randomly surveyed town voters and 36 out of 60 people said that they plan to vote for Miss Eilis for mayor. If there are 1,200 people that vote in the election, about how many votes will Mrs. Eilis receive? So we are going to use the experimental result that we got, that 36 out of the 60 people we asked said that they would vote for her and use that to make a prediction. Now, because those people were randomly chosen, we can use this as a sample of the town. And again, we're just going to set up a proportion. So we have 36 out of a total of 60 people who said that they plan to vote for her. And we want to know then if my total voters is 1,200, how many out of those will actually vote for her? And so again, I just set up a proportion and now I am going to cross multiply. And so I can see that my predicted result would be that about 720 out of those 1,200 people would vote for her. And so I could use that to predict how well she was going to do in the election. 
So here's one for you to try. So again, I set up a proportion and I found that we would predict that about 380 people would vote for Mr. Chu. The answer to the free response question for today is explosions. What was that? Oh, that's what I thought you said. Here are your free response and multiple choice questions for today. So go ahead, pause the video and answer those. And when you're done, have a fabulous rest of the day.